Welcome back to the bathroom. I'm in the middle of a little affordable DIY renovation project. In today's video, you might already be noticing a change in the background. I have painted, selected a wallpaper, installed the new vanity. We're getting into the woodwork with baseboards, window casing, and door casing. I have beautiful new hardware to install. So much to tackle, so let's get right to it. Hi. I'm Lindsay, a former teacher DIY renovating our 71-year-old ranch-style home in Seattle one project at a time. I make videos about interior design so we can learn and style our homes together. In the last episode, I did a DIY floor renovation that was so affordable and I'm absolutely obsessed with the results. I'll link that video in the description box and at the end of this video so you can catch up if you missed it. <gasps> oh, it's pretty. I painted the walls, so let me give you a little rewind of the before and after on the paint, and I selected a wallpaper, finally. After removing all the wall hardware, I love to go in with a primer, especially on a color this dark. I'm using the Fresh Start Primer by Benjamin Moore. It has great coverage with just one coat, and I'm ready to paint a much lighter color over the top. I'm a huge fan of color drenching, that's painting all the walls and the ceiling and woodwork all the same color, although I am going to be painting the woodwork in this room white. I had such a bold color in here before, and it was a great balance for all the overabundance of white tile in here before I redid the floors. Once I redid the floors, it became more clear than ever that my plans to paint the walls back to more of a neutral, adding in a bold and interesting twall inspired wallpaper was the way to go. Painting the ceiling can be a bit of a challenge, so I highly recommend a comfortable, extendable paint roller to make the process much easier. The wall color is Benjamin Moore Early Morning Mist, and I am overjoyed with how it warmed up the room. Ooh. Oh, I really like it. We do have a lot of gray happening in this room, especially with the addition of the flooring, so having a warm color on the walls made all the difference. It's got that antique white vibe. I really like it. And after a lot of debate, I mean a lot, a lot, I finally selected a wallpaper pattern. Make sure you watch all the way to the end for the big reveal. Upgrading this little window is something I've been dreaming about for so long. I really wanted to take this frosted, sort of boring window into the more antique vintage, modern vibe that we're going for in this home, and I had the grand idea to try out one of these little window clings. All I need to do is measure the two window panels, 11 and 1 8 by 26 and 1 8 Cut them out. Spray the window, cling, cling, done. I can't wait to see what this looks like. First, you have to clean your window super well. Just did that and have a paper towel ready. I marked where the top of each one is because you'll forget. <laughs> Wanna make sure I remember which one's left and right. Don't forget to match that too. Hopefully I didn't cut it too crooked. I'll just cut along the top. Oh, it looks kinda neat, right? Okay. When we moved in, finding the perfect custom Roman shades for this window made a huge difference and I absolutely love them, plan to keep them. But one thing I really want to upgrade across the home is window casings. Installing a window casing is fairly simple. I'll tell you the whole process. First, you're gonna wanna install the windowsill. I was going to install a new one, but last minute I decided to salvage the existing one. And I'm glad I did. Although I had to do a little bit of patching work, I'll show you how I did it. Next, I used quarter inch boards to fill in the inside of the window frame up to the window itself using liquid nails and my brad nailer. Next, I measured for the outside trim. I'll link all the products I used down below in case you're interested. 
As you can see, the decision to use the salvaged windowsill was questionable considering it's not the right length, but I had some extra trim board from another project that was the exact same depth, three quarter inch, so I just trimmed it to equally space out the edge past the outside trim. I bought a really fancy trim to use for my bottom board and it's wider at the top and narrower at the bottom. It adds a lot more architectural interest and blends well with the rest of the woodwork trim that I use throughout the space. I'm absolutely in love with how this window casing turned out. It's going to take a lot of finishing work to complete but it is absolutely gorgeous. I learned a lot and can't wait to continue this pattern throughout the rest of the renovation. If you're doing door casings like we are and baseboards, put in your door casings first, then the baseboards, because generally your door casing should go across the top of the door, all the way down to the floor, and then your baseboards can build off of that. Always check historical references though. If you're in a time period home from a certain era and you wanna maintain the integrity of the home when you're renovating, just double check everything before you make your final decisions. First, I have to prep the door frame for the door casing. I'm using my multi-tool here to remove old caulking and just leveling out the trim work around the door from the recent salvage door installation. Once I've measured and cut the trim pieces, I'm using a small level to make sure that they're perfectly lined up before using my brad nailer to secure them to the wall. I'm also using liquid nails here, heavy duty, to make sure it really sticks and lasts the test of time. What's nice about liquid nails is it takes a little bit of time to dry, giving you a little bit of workable time in case you make a mistake and pretty soon I realized that's exactly what I did with the left panel. It didn't quite line up and the reason was because it was slightly off measurement. Realizing as I usually do that the mistake will drive me crazy even though it's just millimeters difference, I peeled it all off, recut and reassembled the door casing. It's okay to make mistakes. It's even more okay to go back and fix them. It's your project. You can go back anytime, fix someone else's work, fix your own work, and learn something. I am absolutely in love with our new vanity. So this one's from Allen and Roth. I'll link it down below. It had the perfect grayish tone on the cabinet. I love the texture on the doors. It came with antiqued brass hardware. The whole thing is just giving me all the feels because I have been waiting so long to transition this bathroom into brass fixtures. I was also able to grab a towel ring, toilet paper holder in that brass color, tension shower rod, and shower curtain hooks in the same brass tone. It's also going to coordinate with the hardware that I've added onto the door when we did that project. The last thing that we have to do though for that is to update the shower. That's going to be a future project when we do the tile and the fixture for the shower all at the same time. Back when I painted this bathroom in the blue-green color, I took out the baseboards knowing that I was going to be replacing them. That was a many, many, many months ago <laughs> at this point. Few things are going to make me and my husband happier than getting baseboards back into this space. I have to measure all the little areas where baseboards are going to go. I already drew out my little floor plan and my cut list going around the room. I went with five and a quarter height in this room since it's a little smaller, but definitely taller than the three and a half half inch baseboards that were in here from the previous owner. I went with a more traditional style. It's going to coordinate with the rest of the home. Tackling a baseboard change across your home is definitely intimidating and expensive. So chipping away at it over time, choosing a product that you know is going to be easy to find and fairly affordable. It makes all the difference. I'm really excited that I finally made the decision and we're getting going on this in the tiniest room in the house first. <laughs> and I also made sure to mark what the angles would be so that I can be extremely accurate. I did not buy a ton of overage and I do not plan to make mistakes. Hopefully I don't have to buy more baseboards. Measurements in hand, it's back up to the wood shop to cut each piece one at a time. I double check my measurements frequently using a tape measure. I use a letter labeling system to make sure that I don't lose track and forget to cut anything, especially the tiny ones. That would be J. Once I have the basics cut, it's time to start the in and out trips between the bathroom and the wood shop as I carefully place each piece using liquid nails and my trusty brad nailer. Don't forget to wear some safety headphones to protect your hearing. 
I'm supposed to be wearing these. If you're using a broad nailer as much as I am, you are definitely suffering from the sound. Well, that is very difficult to do. Protect yourself in the new year. Some of these areas were especially difficult to cut and my labeling system came in clutch so that I didn't forget any pieces. This particular corner was especially challenging where these two tiny pieces met up with a vent cover and the door casing. But a lot of measuring and a few extra cuts later, I had everything installed and met up perfectly. I'm so proud of it. I am so excited to be at this stage in the woodworking process. It doesn't look perfect quite yet. I have a lot of holes to fill, a lot of caulking to do, wood filler, a lot more sanding, obviously painting, but it's been quite a labor of love to get it to this point. It's finally the moment after a lot of debate and I cannot wait to see what it's going to look like in here. Oh, wow. I don't know if you're getting the full effect, but look at this. It's like a jungle twall. We've got some beautiful lions here, parrots, birds in the sky, monkeys in the beautiful big fruit trees, turtles over here. The more I look at it, the more little animals and critters I find. I love that it has that sort of sketchy quality, not your typical French countryside, ladies in beautiful dresses, men's in those little cropped pants. It's just a little bit more modern and different. I like that it's not super colorful because it's gonna be easy to change other decor around it. I ordered four rolls, but I really wanted to make sure we had plenty of overage so that we can match up the print. This one's a 20 and a half inch repeat. It's quite large, but I wanted something that was gonna have a large scale. Our next episode, we're gonna be leveling out the vanity wall, prepping it, completely smoothing it, and getting ready to put in the peel and stick wallpaper. And I'm also very interested to see if peel and stick wallpaper paper is going to work in here as I planned. So you'll have to come back to see what happens. All right, let's look at our progress photos quick before and after in three, two, one. Check me out on Instagram. I'll be uploading a lot more shorts in the new year and I'm excited to share some quick little tips with you here and on Instagram. I have many hours of wood filling and caulking to do. I've got some new tools to check out, so I'll be hard at work doing that. Check out episode one of the bathroom makeover. If you miss the DIY on this floor, it is so awesome, so affordable and so easy and I hope you love it. And I'll see you in the next video. Happy decorating.